Cartoons are often seen as lighthearted and fun, but beneath the surface, there can be a lot of hidden messages and themes that aren't always obvious. Some shows use dark humor, satire, or symbolism to explore serious issues like death, religion, war, mental illness, or even social and political commentary. These themes may be subtle, or they may be right in front of our faces, but we may not always notice them because we're too focused on the silly antics of our favorite characters. However, when we start to analyze these cartoons more closely, we may uncover some disturbing secrets that challenge our previous perceptions of the show and its characters. Now, get ready to have your childhood memories ruined as we explore five dark cartoon theories that will make you see these shows in a whole new light. Do you remember watching Courage the Cowardly Dog as a kid? It was a weird, wacky show that had a cult following, thanks to its unique blend of humor, horror, and heart. The show's main character was a timid pink dog named Courage, who lived in the middle of nowhere with his elderly owners, Muriel and Eustace Bag. Together, they encountered all sorts of bizarre creatures and supernatural occurrences. Did you know that there's a dark theory that suggests that the show might actually be based on a true story? According to the theory, there's a house in New Mexico that looks eerily similar to the house in the show. Supposedly, an elderly couple lived there and claimed to have witnessed strange occurrences while living there, including paranormal activity and sightings of a creature known as the Skinwalker. The Skinwalker is a figure from Native American folklore that is said to be a shapeshifter, capable of taking on the form of any animal it chooses. According to legend, the Skinwalker is a powerful and malevolent being that can cause all sorts of havoc and misery. Its name comes from the belief that it can take on the skin of an animal or human and use it to transform itself. The couple who lived in the house mysteriously disappeared without a trace just after they reported seeing the Skinwalker, leaving only their dog behind. This eerie story has led many fans to speculate that the show was inspired by this real-life event. After all, the show's creators were known for their love of horror and the supernatural, so it's not too far-fetched to think that they might have drawn inspiration from a real-life mystery. The theory proposes that the Flintstone show actually takes place in a post-apocalyptic era and that the characters we see in the show are the only remnants of humanity left after a major catastrophic event has wiped out modern civilization and most of the human race. This event caused the world to regress back to a primitive state, similar to the Stone Age. However, despite the primitive setting, the characters in the show use a number of anachronistic elements. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence for this theory is the presence of electronic devices in the show. For example, in one episode, Fred Flintstone uses a machine to mix his own concrete, while in another episode, the characters watch TV. These are clearly modern inventions that would not exist in a world that was truly in the Stone Age. These anachronistic elements are evidence of a post-apocalyptic world in which the characters are struggling to survive. The various prehistoric animals that they use as tools are actually genetic experiments that were created after the apocalypse in an attempt to create new, useful species. Similarly, the modern conveniences that they use are actually relics of the past that they have repurposed in order to survive. Another key piece of evidence is the fact that the characters in the show all have exaggerated physical features. For example, Fred Flintstone has an abnormally large head and a small body, According to the theory, these exaggerated features are actually the result of radiation exposure in the aftermath of the apocalypse. Additionally, there are other elements in the show that suggest a more advanced civilization that was lost due to some kind of disaster. For example, the characters celebrate Christmas, which is a holiday that did not exist in the Stone Age. Again, all of this clearly suggests that there was a time when the world was more advanced and the characters are now living in the aftermath of some kind of event that caused a regression to a primitive state. In conclusion, the Flintstones theory suggests that the beloved cartoon takes place in a much darker and more sinister world than we initially thought. An era where the Flintstones and their neighbors are one of the last remaining humans struggling to survive in a world that has long forgotten the advancements of modern technology. It's a fascinating and disturbing theory that is also chillingly plausible. Who would have thought that our favorite animated prehistoric family was actually living in a bleak post-apocalyptic world? It's a shocking revelation that will make you see the show in a whole new light.
The Dexter's Laboratory show follows the life of Dexter, a boy genius who has a secret laboratory hidden behind a bookshelf in his bedroom. He spends most of his time conducting experiments and inventions, but his mischievous sister Dee Dee often interferes and destroys his work. The theory suggests that Dexter killed his parents and created clones of them through science. The reason why Dexter keeps his laboratory a secret is not because he wants to protect his inventions from DD, but because he is hiding a dark secret that he is responsible for the death of his parents in a laboratory accident. According to the theory, Dexter recreated his parents through science as a way to cope with the guilt and loneliness he felt after the accident. The evidence can be found in the show's ending song, which features the lyrics, there's gloom and doom when things go boom in Dexter's lab suggesting that there is something sinister and ominous about Dexter's laboratory and that something terrible has happened in the past. Moreover, the show has several instances where Dexter's inventions have gone wrong, causing explosions and other dangerous situations. Now, did you ever notice how Dexter's parents in the show are so dim-witted? Well, that's because they are clones and Dexter intentionally made them dim-witted to prevent them from discovering his secret laboratory and finding out the truth about their origins. Dexter's technological mastery extends to his ability to control the central nervous system. In one episode, he replaces the brain of a dinosaur with a dog, showing that he can manipulate the nervous system of animals. He has also demonstrated the ability to control the intellect of a person in the episode Dexter's Assistant. In another episode, Old Man Dexter, he shows the ability to create a rapid aging process to make his clones age at an expedient rate. In the episode, Maternal Combat, Dexter expresses extreme confusion at the fact that his mother got sick, saying, mothers do not get sick, they take care of the sickly. This seems very ignorant for a boy genius to say, unless he was noticing faultiness in her programming. Furthermore, in one episode, his parents are blown up and turned into monsters, but they are unharmed in the very next episode. This could be seen as another proof that his parents are not human, but clones that were made impervious to damage by Dexter to prevent the same accident from happening again. Based on all of these clues, it is safe to say that this theory is highly plausible. It's a tragic theory, but one that makes a lot of sense in the context of the show. The popular cartoon show, Ed, Ed, and Eddie, may have a darker side that has gone unnoticed by many. Upon closer inspection of the show, a disturbing detail has emerged. It is the frequent appearance of severed skulls in isolated locations throughout Peach Creek, where the show is set. The skulls are always found in hidden places, such as the cluttered junkyard, overflowing dumpsters, and even buried underground, suggesting that someone intentionally placed them there to keep them hidden. Based on this evidence, a theory has emerged that there may be a serial killer active in Peach Creek. The killer's modus operandi seems to be the dismemberment of victims, specifically through decapitation, and then disposing of their body parts in isolated locations throughout the area. It is unclear who the killer is, but there are few potential candidates. There is the mention of a possible boogeyman-type figure known as the belly button eater in the episode Ed in the Bush. The fact that both the Ed Trio and the Urban Rangers knew about this figure implies that it is a well-known urban legend in Peach Creek. It is possible that this figure is a childlike interpretation of the very real serial killer in the show. One darker theory is that the killer may be someone the kids know, possibly even a family member of the main trio. Eddie's older brother has been shown to have sociopathic tendencies and may have engaged in dangerous and cruel pranks. He was also implied to have been driven out of Peach Creek and may be hiding from the law. This theory is supported by the fact that Eddie's parents do not want him anywhere near his brother. There is also an unseen figure whom Eddie knocks out with a gag meat cleaver in one episode. The fact that this person was stalking the trio and was found near an abandoned factory and a forest suggests that they could be a potential suspect in the serial killer theory. There is a dark theory circulating among fans of the animated show, SpongeBob SquarePants, that suggests the character of Mr. Krabs, the greedy and manipulative owner of the Krusty Krab restaurant, is a cannibal that has been killing and serving his own kind to the inhabitants of Bikini Bottom for many years. One of the key pieces of evidence cited to support this theory is the name of Mr. Krabs' flagship menu item, the Krabby Patty. The suggestion is that this burger is made from the meat of crabs, Mr. Krabs' own species. 
Furthermore, the fact that we rarely if ever see another crab on the show lends credence to the notion that Mr. Krabs has been killing off his fellow crustaceans to keep his restaurant in business. It is also suggested that the other items on the Krusty Krab menu, such as kelp shake, coral bits, and seafoam soda, are indicative of a lack of variety in ingredients available to Mr. Krabs due to his supposed hunting and killing of his own species. Moreover, fans have pointed out that in one of the show's episodes, Mr. Krabs was seen eating Krabby Patties himself and saying, so that's what I taste like, which raises the disturbing possibility that he is a cannibal.